welcome to the February 2015 shop tour. I usually st start these shop tours inside the shop, but uh, for the last almost two weeks, in fact today's Saturday, for the last two weeks, since uh, a week ago, two weeks ago tonight, um, I've had an issue with the shop. And uh, let me show you, I'll unlock the shop and I'll show you. So there's the lock. It's not opening. Um, I'm honestly not sure why. I've had this problem once before. Uh, at the time, it was the automatic garage do door opener that had broken with the door shut. But I've long since ripped the door opener out, and uh, all I can conclude is that something has fallen against the door or into the track and jammed it. But uh, I know I got home from the Pinewood Derby two weeks ago, stepped out of the car, went to put stuff away, and I found it locked like this. So now, I finally have a chance to essentially break into the garage. So that's what we're gonna do for this tour. Um, when it broke last time, I was able to actually, from my attic, break through the ceiling of the garage and climb down into the garage, which is what I'm gonna to have to do again. Uh, unfortunately, in the few years that have passed since that happened, my ceiling, if you remember from other shop tours, is almost completely covered in things. I have two lumber racks up there, a clamp rack, an air filter, some lights, um, all sorts of stuff. So it's going to be a little bit trickier to climb down through the ceiling. Plus, most of the tools I would use to cut the ceiling are in the shop. So let's, uh, let's head up to the attic and see how this goes. It's a nice formal staircase up into my unfinished attic. Uh, house was built like that and no one's gotten around to finishing the attic. In the original sales brochure it actually talks about how the attic is move-in ready and while that's true and I mocked previous owners for not having done it, I've been in the house a few years myself now and I still haven't. But uh, this is where we need to go is to climb all the way to the end of that and then uh, down through the ceiling. I managed to get back there and cut a hole in the ceiling, so let's go take a look. plan is that I'll get rid of this garage ceiling and win this space out here as a storage loft. I'll separate it from the other attic, I'll put plywood up here, build some shelves or something and keep lumber and other supplies up here. So just a sneak peek into years in the future when I get to building this loft. But if we go over here in the dark, I'll turn on this flashlight. You can see the hole that I made. And if we come over here, when I look down, shine the light, there's my bench, joiner, um, the rest of the shop. I know I can't see from here, but maybe you guys can see. Well, you can see my air filter. I don't know, can you see what's blocking the door? I don't know, but that's what I'm climbing down into. So, let's get this set up and we'll start the climb.
having met with such miserable failure, thankfully I have a pry bar and a decent hammer here. I'll take a moment to rant about this hammer. Um, this is a rigid right-handed hammer. You can see it's got this little tab here. It fits very comfortably in the right hand. They haven't made this, I'm going to say, for about a decade or so. Um, it's a carpenter's hammer. It's got a very well-raked back fork there at the end. Um, and let's put it up to the light. You can see the light through that little slot there. See the white of the wall. There you go. See how the head is not quite attached. That's supposed to dampen vibration. I'm not 100% sure if it does or not. But with this nice fat base, it catches in the hand wonderfully. And it says it's an 18 ounce, and well, it is an 18 ounce, but it's supposed to swing with the weight of a 20 because of all these designs. I don't know. It seemed a bit gimmicky when I got it, but I've learned to love this hammer. I'm a little uh, disappointed. Rigid doesn't make it anymore because I would. If they were available, I'd buy two or three more now, so I'd still have them. Um, that said, the traditional S-Wing is still a fantastic hammer. Um, and that's what I use when I'm actually working like outside and on projects and on the roof and stuff. But this is my carpenter's hammer. It's a little bit more like a framing hammer, given its weight. But I absolutely love this thing. So, just a quick note of the hammer, since we're going to use it. So, let's go back to the door over there. Let's see what we can do here. That may be it. I just pulled. This seems to have been caught under the header. I pulled it back. Let's see. So now that I've pulled the top back, let's uh, let's see if she opens. Ah. All right. Peace on. Let's close it. All right, so that is the garage door fixed. I never would have guessed that, but the front of the door, as it came, as it came down, was kicking out a little bit and getting jammed underneath the header. So that's why it had absolutely no play because this whole rib down the front was nice and stiff and not letting it go. So uh, let's pick these things up and now we'll do a quick shop tour. All right, starting on the right side as we always do. Here's the corner. It's a pile of stuff to go up in the attic. My electrical tools the handle that moves the bandsaw for the mobility kit Craig jigs, a tapering jig, some other jigs on the wall there's the bandsaw it's up and running and uh, I'm loving it so far I have to do a little bit of adjustment to this upper guide it kicks out a little bit as it comes down but there's adjustments back here and I've been talking to Laguna they've told me how to do it so now it's just a matter of doing it hopefully I'll get that done maybe even tomorrow we'll see uh, down there my hammer drill in the blue case, it's actually underneath the saw now. The Bosch demo hammer from work. It, in its day it was pretty good, but it's lived a long and tired life and it's not cutting now. And I've got a Milwaukee demo hammer in here from my dad that is an absolute monster and it should do it. And that's all to remove that stone back there. So someday soon I'll get to that stone. But as we come through, it's the bandsaw. Not uh, bandsaw, that is a table saw. See, it's, it's got a table. It's a table saw. <laughs> My cabinets are still here as they have been. Drills go up in there. My hand tool cabinet. For those of you who might not expect it, bam, I do own planes. Don't tend to use them that often. I use those rasps a lot more. But I do know what a plane is. I do know how to use one. Uh, we come through here. Toolboxes, Festool vacuum, screws and bits and stuff, Festool stuff, clamps. Um, this is a complete mess because I haven't been in here since the day of the Pinewood Derby. So this is all the Pinewood Derby stuff strewn across the table. i got to clean that up. Here is the painted bottles for Dave's trophy, which is long overdue now. I need to get my button gear on that trophy. Um, there's more Pinewood Derby stuff. 
and more Pinewood Derby stuff in front of the miter saw. Garbage got to go out, and the dust collector, which is awesome by the way, someday soon, hopefully within the next couple weeks, I'll do a video on how I built it. I absolutely love this freaking thing. It is fantastic. It's a beast. And uh, and there's the planer. So that is the um, the shop tour, the elongated entry into the shop and the abbreviated tour of the shop. So this is for February 2015. Hope you have an easier time getting in the shop than I do, and you'll be nice and productive.